such a great opportunity, great time. If a person is busy in that sin, then do tawbah, forgiveness will come. And if a person isn't busy or you could say doing that sin, then be careful and cautious for the future. This is very good that we have an awareness. We realize that, for example, there is an illness, a bad illness. The doctors give the warning shout. Then a person, if he is suffering from that illness, then he should be taking hold of the cure for that illness. And if a person is in danger of committing that sin, then should be careful and cautious. And we say, yeah, this person is a person of understanding, who is aware what's good and bad. So today if we realize what is the biggest sin of all, then shouldn't we try to save ourselves from this sin? And if it doesn't occur, may it not occur, may Allah Ta'ala not allow it to occur, that this sin is in our life. But if it is, then can there be a better opportunity than this? Then Allah Ta'ala's rahmah and doors of mercy open. Allah says, ask me and I will forgive you straight away. Then that person will be forgiven. Told us the biggest sin of all, the biggest sin. What is that sin? Shirk. Shirk. Allahu Akbar. What, what is the sin? Shirk. And we say shirk. How can it be that I'm doing shirk? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I recite the kalima. I've recited the kalima. How can it be that I've done shirk? So the true mu'min, the mu'min and the, the Muslim, he says, I've just come back from hajj and umrah. But Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the biggest sin is shirk. And shirk, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us, then it means that it is possible we carry out the action of shirk. So my brothers, shirk definitely is most possibly, most possible it is the fact that a person can carry out shirk. And if somebody implements shirk, then what will be the hal of that person? What will be the conclusion? Where will that person go? Where will that person go? So the Quran tells us this. Allah Ta'ala mentions carefully, وَدَعُوهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ This is what Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran. That don't do shirk, do my ibadah, fa'budhu, mukhlisina lahu deen. And what do we do? We have said, oh Allah, we recited la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, we have broken the statues, we become Muslims, and we used to prostrate to the idols in the statues, and there were thousands of gods we had, and we considered them as God, as Lord, and we did, we ascribe partners to Allah, and we're saying now, la Allah. So we're saying there, there is no other God, then Allah gives an answer, you've said la. You've said la to all of the statues and the idols, but there's still one idol present within you. There is still an idol present within you, and that is the idol of your nafs, of your desires. That when I recited the kalama, and after reciting the kalama, I accepted Allah, then I surrendered myself to you, O Allah. Allah says, how? That I am worse than the ghulam, than the servant, till I am so, so simple and low now. I've become yours totally. That whatever you say on my body, on my ruh, you are the master, the owner, the, 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 the king. And everything will respond to you. There's no other king who can come, no other master, no other lord, nobody else's order. Allah will be your order. Upon your hukum, upon your orders, everything will occur, Allah, in my life. That is what we said when we recited the kalama and then we were detached from shirk. Brothers, is this how we have come away from shirk or not? If we don't say this statement, then we say, no, 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 this is not the case to Allah. I don't uh, believe in these points I've just said, but the rest, everything, yes, I believe Allah, you, uh, uh, I believe in you. So will Allah accept this iman from us? No. So Allah has said, Allah has told us that you've announced yourself. Allah, all orders will be followed. Your orders will be followed. Your hukum Allah and I will respond. You are the Malik and I'm the Ghulam. And then who does he obey? From within the the batin. So we listen to the zahir externally, we listen, we read, and we hear that Allah Ta'ala's order is this, but then we always respond to the nafs. And my brothers, does this ever occur? And this is happening. This is occurring. Allah Ta'ala's order comes, and from within the nafs says, no, 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 don't carry out this order of Allah, listen to my order. So who is the God then? Allah or my nafs? Who is my God? Think. I have to ask myself, is my nafs not my God at that time? So wherever there is a clash with Allah Ta'ala's order, if Allah's ordering something and we do not accept, Atiullah wa atiul Rasul, Allah says, follow me and my Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have to, Allah Ta'ala says, Atiullah faqad faza fawzan azimah. The Quran has told us clearly that Allah Ta'ala's obedience is the obedience to the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my Rasul, my Nabi. What a great, great, great maqam. So whose hukum is this? 
obeying the desires. That to save ourselves from the shirk of the desires. Then I said, let me give you the meaning of the deeper. So how can we identify the shirk that is there within our hearts, in our souls? To save ourselves from shirk or to identify the shirk of the nafs is so hidden that this shirk is penetrates, it penetrates, it penetrates to the depth of the layers of the person. Just like the ant on a dark night within a dark mountain, within the dark rock on the dark boulder, you cannot see that ant, can you? And that's how that shirk penetrates the layers of a person. And that is a riyah, showing off pride and showing off to people. Now let's listen to the next hadith about riyah. And this is shirk, but we don't consider it as shirk. I won't tell anybody that my child is a hafid, he's memorized Quran. I won't show people in the world I'm doing it for the sake of Allah. Even if a child is not revising properly, see how his hifs will progress from today. If you have sincerity, purity, make it near. I don't want to attach the learning of ilm of my child with the dunya. We are learning, my child is learning khalis for the sake of the akhirah. My child will become a hafiz and an alim. I won't tell anybody that my child is an hips or is an alim. I will hide that in my heart and in my mind. And I won't show this off because I don't want to be included in the list of people who did raya, who showed off. Did it for pride or for shirk. Am I right or wrong, my friends? And those who have learnt, then hide your knowledge. Don't show off or say, I'm this and that. So this is that ilm, that knowledge. The more you hide it, the more it will multiply and spread. Its fragrance will multiply and spread. This is mushk. This is a smell, a beautiful fragrance. It cannot be hidden. This is the hadith I am presenting to you. That these mushrikeen who did their actions apparently for the sake of Allah, but they were showing off. So as a shaddad, radiyallahu anhu is the narrator of the hadith he said that the person whose salah is attached to showing off who's fasting and ibadah and worship and quran is linked to showing off that person is a mushrik the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this hadith number two that this mushrik who carries out actions due to showing off showing to other people their other punishment will be such that their faces will be changed and the faces will be twisted you will not be able to identify them third hadith i'll tell you the hadith the third hadith that in the world between the heavens and the, the land, the land and the skies, the most wretched and cursed are those people, Allah Ta'ala announces that these people are cursed and wretched. The mushrikeen who did shirk due to showing off Allahu Akbar. And then the fourth hadith, that the person who does shirk, who carries out the action of shirk, Jahannam is Jahannam, hell. And everybody knows about hell, we cannot even describe it, it's so severe, but within hellfire there's a place, Hizbul, Uzbul, Huzan. It is given the definition, that place, the title. Ulema Ikram, Muftiyan, scholars are sat here, they're listening, and you have heard this hadith, Uzbul, Huzan, this place, and that space, place in hell, especially has been designed and created for those who did shirk, based on showing off, not for the sake of Allah, rather to to fulfill their carnal and base desires and showing off to people and they will be thrown into the all deeds that a man implements are for his sake that oh my servant all of the deeds you commit and implement are for your sake why are they strange from me because I don't know are you doing these deeds is there shirk in these deeds so all of these deeds you are responsible for your own deeds Allah says I'm not responsible you are responsible why why did Allah Ta'ala say this that all of your amal my servant are for your sake that you do this for you you are responsible for your deeds I'm not responsible Allah Ta'ala says and you will have to account for your deeds I have no confidence in the acceptance of your deeds I don't know how you will come to me on the day of judgment so you keep your deeds to yourself and you present them on the one but but the fast is one deed one such deed one such amal Allah says this deed is mine it's for my sake and I myself will give personally the reward for this deed say subhanallah say subhanallah say subhanallah and here we hear the answer to this danger that we've learnt in this discussion today that we are in danger, constant threat, we are doing actions. How do I know that I'm not showing off to others when I'm doing these actions? But let's learn today how to eliminate 100% the danger of showing off and doing shirk which we are worshipping. Allah has given the cure in this hadith. Subhanallah. Why has Allah Ta'ala liked this action so much? Allah Ta'ala has put so many other ibadah to the side. What quality is there in fasting? Allah Ta'ala says one fasting person can never be a person who's showing off. Why? What is hidden within fast? That's why Allah Ta'ala says fasting is for my sake. And the 30 fast that you keep in Ramadan from here, I will recognize you. Are you my friend? Or are you against me? Allah says one deed you did purely and sincerely. The riyah showing off cannot come into fast. That recite the name of Allah in abundance, regularly in high quantity. So it's stated that this is the cure for riyah. This is the, this is the cure, the solution. 
That if you remember Allah Ta'ala's name, the person who's fasting, in the state of fasting, Allah Ta'ala's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is hukam, that that fasting person, the greatest deed, the best deed to do whilst you are fasting, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, is to do the dhikr of Allah. Do it kathira. So if you carry on doing this during the state of fasting, this is the barakah of fasting, that the fast doesn't let you come towards riyadh. The fast teaches us this. Fastakhtaroo, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that pay attention to this deed, to this uh, um, amal, this Action. Do the dhikr of Allah in abundance and the dhikr of Allah is such barakah and blessings that it doesn't let that person come to riya and the protection of riya is what? Dhikr in abundance. The dhikr in abundance. And this is the nur of fast, the nur of Ramadan. Allah's Nabi said that do dhikr of Allah in high quantity. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah.